In this first video, teaching your child how to sew, I've chosen a monster face because I think it's going to be fun for your child to learn how to sew. They are going to learn some techniques here um, and it's something that is quite quick so they, you're not going to lose their attention as you're sewing. The skills that they're going to learn is going to be a running stitch, which is a basic stitch which can be used to make practically anything with, and how to sew buttons on. I'm using felt because it's a great medium to work with. It's nice and soft on the hands and it doesn't fray so you don't have to worry about finishing seams. But I do suggest that you cut out the fabric first of all. Obviously, you know your child. You know whether they're going to be able to handle a pair of scissors or not. I don't suggest you use a rotary cutter with children at all. They're far too sharp. Um, but if you cut out the shapes beforehand and then when cutting into things like the hair or cutting the thread, maybe that's something that you feel that you want to join in as well. If your child's a little bit older, maybe they're used to working with scissors maybe they're crafting and card crafting already then you know whether your child's going to be fine with scissors or not I'll leave that up to you what I have done is already cut out the two rectangles I think that's a good idea I'm also going to need a couple of buttons and I think the buttons being an uneven in size give it a little bit of a quirky kind of look you're going to need a handful of toy filler because there's a little bit of padding in here I've used a ruler and I've got a chalk pencil so basically that brushes off because I'm actually going to draw a line where I'm going to sew and around the edge. The needle that I'm using is an embroidery needle. If you find a tapestry needle or maybe a child's needle um, where the end isn't quite so sharp and a nice big eye to the, to the needle will really help. And the thread that I'm using is a really nice strong, this is an anchor pearl thread. Um, so a crochet thread or an embroidery thread. If you're using an embroidery thread that splits, then I'd split that into three. But if you can find one that doesn't split, you're going to find that easier. I think your child will find that easier to actually thread the needle to start with. So I'll leave you to go and get your supplies. I'll leave you to cut out the fabric that you need to initially. And then we'll get sewing our monster. So this is your needle. One end of the needle is very, very sharp and the other end of the needle has a hole in it. That's called the eye of the needle. So the eye of the needle is where you're going to put your thread. So just push the thread through the hole. It may take you a few times. And when it comes through the other side, just pull it through so that your thread, the end of your thread, comes to about halfway down. The, that is a needle that is threaded. On the other end of the thread, we need to tie a knot. So you're going to take the end of the thread and make a loop like that, and then push the end through the loop and pull it through and when you pull that tight you've got a little knot on the end that's going to help to stop the thread pull through your felt when you're sewing now so that you can draw in a straight line or sew in a straight line draw a line on your felt with a pencil and this is a pencil that is meant for drawing on fabric so the line will brush away when I've finished and there won't be a line there anymore. So you're going to take your needle from the back of the fabric and push it through on top of the line and then pull it all the way through. Push it back into the fabric a little way apart like so and then take the needle from the back and pull it all the way through. You see how the knot there stops the end of the thread from going all the way through the felt? Then you need to feel your way with the needle and make another stitch. So that's one stitch and bring your needle up a little way away from that stitch and pull it through. And try and make the gap here about the same distance as the stitches here and try and keep the stitches all the same length. So there's my line again, let's push the needle back through, pull it from the back, not too tight, if you pull your stitches too tight 
your fabric will all gather up like this and we don't want that, we want it to be nice and flat. And then again from the back, push the needle up and bring it back through. Back down again and bring it through from the back like this. Now you can make these stitches really small if you wanted to. So if I'm sewing two pieces of fabric together, I'll make the stitches really tiny because that way my fabric will stay together for longer. So those can be very small. Now another thing you can do when you get used to making stitches like this is when you pull your needle through to the front, instead of doing one stitch at a time, you can go, you ready? In and out and in and out and you're not even pulling the needle all the way through. You're threading the stitches onto the needle. So in and out. I'm feeling on the back of my fabric where, where the needle is going in, but I'm being very careful not to put the needle into my finger. In and out. And now I have three stitches all on that needle. So now I'm going to pull the needle through and it'll do all of those stitches all at the same time. So you can see you've got different lengths of stitches, long ones and short ones, and then ones where you do the needle in and out and in and out and in and out. So those stitches you can use to sew some pieces together, or you can use those stitches to make faces and embroider things. So I'm going to tie another knot in the end of my thread, just the same as before, so I've made a loop and I'm pulling it tight. And this is another thing that you can do with a stitch like this. You can sew buttons on. So this time I'm going to bring my needle from the back. I'm going to put my button over the top of the needle before I pull it all the way through. Then pull my needle through. And then I'm taking the needle back down again through the other hole on the other side. And that's how I'm going to sew a button on. Now on the back here, I need to make a knot to stop that thread from coming undone. So this time I'm going to go right where that thread came out of the fabric, in and out, but I'm not pulling the needle through yet. I'm going to take this piece of the thread and wrap it around the end of the needle two times. Then I'll hold onto that with my thumb and my finger is on the button here and I'm going to push the needle through and pull it out of the other side. And when I pull that tight, you can see there I've got another little knot. So when I cut my thread off, that's the knot that I started with and that's the knot that I've ended with and there I've sewn a button on. So let's make something using a running stitch and a button stitch. I'm going to make a monster. So I've cut out two rectangles of felt and they're both the same size. I'm going to draw a square so I'm going to draw a line a little way away from the bottom like this I'm going to draw a line down the side but not all the way to the end and then I'm going to draw across here and I'm going to draw down the other side so this is where I'm going to put a running stitch, which was the first stitch that I showed you. So I'm only going to use one piece of my felt at the moment. And this is going to be my monster face in that square. 
and this is going to be monster hair and I'll show you how I'm going to cut that later on. So I'm going to put a little cross where I want my monster eyes to be. You can put these wherever you like and I'm going to put a wavy line where I want my monster mouth to be and that can be any shape that you like. So what I'm going to do first is a running stitch along that line. So I've got my needle and thread. Remember I always need to tie a knot in the end of the thread so it doesn't pull through the felt. And I'm going to bring my needle up from the back to the end of the mouth. And then I'm going to go back in just next door and then out again. Just following that line. Don't worry if you don't have your stitches right on top of the line because that line will brush away afterwards so you won't see it. You'll only see your stitches. So back in again next door. And it doesn't really matter if your stitches are all exactly the same size because monsters don't have faces that are all exactly the same size. So I'm just going around this curve here. The needle back in again. So back in and out. And remember this is called a running stitch but you don't have to run to sew it. You can be very slow if you want to. So in and out and in and out until I get to the end. So again, just feel where your needle's going in. Careful you don't put your finger on the end of it because it is very sharp. There. So that's my wavy mouth finished. Now remember I need to tie a knot because if I don't tie a knot my thread's going to come undone. So right where that thread came out I'm going to make the needle go in and out but not take it all the way through and pull on the end of the thread that's at the end of the mouth. Wrap that round the needle twice hold it so I've got one side with my finger and one side with my thumb and pull that through. And there's my little knot which will stop the thread from coming undone. And then just cut off the thread. Now I'm going to sew the buttons on for eyes. So again let's make a knot in the end of my thread. So make a loop and push the end through pull that knot down. So where I put my little crosses I'm going to take my needle into the felt but not all the way through and then we'll go into the button. Then bring your thread all the way through. I want to have the button holes at the side of each other like that so I've twisted it around so the button holes are next to each other and put this needle back in again. Now to make that button nice and tight so it doesn't come off, I can push the needle back through the hole again so I can feel where that is from the back of my felt, pull it through and take it back down again. And there's my needle coming through at the back. And then I need to tie another knot. So go in and out with the needle, but don't bring it all the way through. Wrap the thread round twice and push the needle through. And then I need to do just the same with the opposite eye. So let's make that knot at the end. Here's the second eye. So push the needle through. Pop on your button. Pull it all the way through. 
I'm going to make the holes in the, in the button next to each other again and go back in again and then pull it through from the back. Then to make it nice and tight, I can feel where that hole is when the needle comes from the back. Careful you don't put your thumb over the end of it because it is sharp. And then push the needle back in again. Then I'm going to turn it over and then make another knot. So go in and out, but don't pull the needle through. Hold onto the needle, wrap that round two times, and pull the needle through. And then we can cut off the thread. And there's my monster face. Doesn't he look scary? Now the next thing we're going to do is to sew around the box. So I'm going to put this piece of felt on top of the other one. Do you remember we had two pieces of felt together? And this time I'm going to use blue. So take some of the thread off here, just pull it away and snip. And then just like before, I need to put the thread through the eye of the needle. Remember the eye is the hole at the end of the needle. Now this is very thick thread, so it may not go through straight away but just keep trying and push it through until you see it come through the hole and then pull it till it's about halfway down the long piece of thread. And then you know what we do next? We've got a knot to tie in the end. So make that loop, push the end through. In you go. And there's my knot. Now this time, I'm not going to sew all the way around all in one go. I need to leave a hole in the bottom because I'm going to put some stuffing inside it. And I want to hide that knot because if I push my needle from the back, I'm going to see a knot on the back here. So how I do that is to lift this up and push my needle in between the two pieces, so just at the back of one piece, and I come out here. Then pull your thread through. So now the knot is inside two pieces. And then I'm going to go in, all the way through both pieces, and out, and do a running stitch that goes all the way around the square. Don't pull it too tight. So I'm going to come into the corner now and then I'm going to turn around a corner here. So I'm going to turn my work around and carry on down this long side. Now when you've made one monster, you could make another monster and give him some arms and some legs. He could have a nose. He could have really cross monster eyebrows. He could have three eyes. He could have four eyes. He could have two mouths. Monsters can look however you want a monster to look. You can use lots of different colours and you can make them really, really big or you can make them very, very small. So this is your own monster and you can make him or her look just how you want him or her to look. And you may start sewing very slowly when you do this, but the more you practice, the quicker you're going to be able to sew. And in the next video, we're going to learn different stitches as well. So the next one's going to be a blanket stitch. So you can then make another monster if you want it to with a blanket stitch. 
but this is the easiest stitch for you to learn how to do because all you're doing is going in and out and in and out and just kind of try and keep those stitches as straight as you can Now remember I said I need to leave a hole so I can put some stuffing inside. I'm not going to take my needle off and I'm not going to make a knot. I'm going to put my needle to one side and I'm just going to put some toy filler or some stuffing, which is this stuff, inside that hole. So put small pieces in to start with. So let's open this up and just push that inside and I'm going to push the first piece right up to the top of my monster head and then in goes the second piece that's going to go into the other corner so don't make him too fat we just want a little bit of toy filler inside just to make his face a little bit chubby and it goes there, I think that's quite a nice, a nice plump monster. Now I can take my needle and I can carry on sewing. So squish those two sides together again and I can sew straight across the bottom where that hole is. So just in and out and in and out. Now do you remember right at the very beginning I didn't want to see the knot so I hid it inside the two pieces of felt and that's what I'm going to do when I finish as well. So this is my last stitch so I'm going in and down and you see on the other side where my thread is here what I'm going to do is to open up those two pieces of fabric like that and I'm going to push my needle in between the two pieces. I can see the knot where I started with their look. So pull that through and then my end knot I'm going to keep those pieces apart and I'm going to make my last knot inside here. So just like before, you're going to push your needle in and out, hold on to it, wrap your thread around there two times and then pull it through. And then when I snip off my thread, I don't see the knot because it's all hidden inside. One last thing that we need to do is to give our monster some hair. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut down here. Not right up to those stitches because I don't want to cut through them. But I'm just going to make some cut marks all the way across the top of my monster head. And that's going to be my monster hair. And that's my monster finished. It's a bit scary, isn't he? <laughs>